Okay guys, so here I am for another video. Um, this video is going to be kind of like tips and information on PlayStation 3 YLOD. So mainly I'm going to talk about uh, why the YLOD happens and also uh, some tips to prevent it. So like if these are the systems that you use most often. So here I have two 60 gig PS3 models. The reason I have two of them is because one of them I've modified and then the other one I've kind of like left stock. But for both of them, I have opened them up and cleaned them. So that would be my first main tip is if you're buying one of these used and especially if it still has like the warranty sticker. So the warranty sticker is usually going to be on this area, like right above this little like screw piece. It's kind of hard to see in the light. But yeah, it would be like right in that area where that hole is. So if it's the sticker is still there, then that means that your PS3 has not been opened up in about, you know, typically over 10 years. So these ones came out in 2006, the 60 gigs specifically. Um, so yeah, if it hasn't been opened up, that means definitely your thermal paste and thermal pads on the main like components. So your processor, graphics processor, uh, MOSFETs for delivering power to those parts. So those haven't been replaced in over 10 years and they'll be like really old and they won't be functioning how they're intended to. So my first piece of advice is if you're buying one of these used, I would definitely recommend uh, opening it up and cleaning out all the dust. It's actually not as hard as it sounds. There's a bunch of like YouTube videos, uh, articles. Uh, I fix it has like a really good, um, a really good, uh, what's it called walkthrough for opening up this uh, specific model. So the 60 gig, I'll try and link it down below so you guys can see it. They have like pictures and everything step by step. And you know, you just follow it straight down to open it up and then go backwards to put it back together again. But yeah, they have a really good video on it. So sorry if you hear guys some noise in the background. But anyway, now I want to talk about the reasons why the YLOD happens uh, more often on the 60 gig models. So in my previous video that I made, I was talking about like the main differences between the 60 gigs or sorry, the uh, backwards compatible models and the uh, non backwards compatible models. And one of the big things was that the backwards compatible ones have a lot more vents than the non backwards compatible models. So first of all, like I just showed you the ones up here. So where the USB port area is backwards compatible, compatible ones have extra vents up front. They're also going to have uh, extra vents on the side bottom specifically. So you see a bunch more vents there and the vents along that edge right there. So the reason why is that these 60 models are kind of special. And what I mean by that is that they exhaust heat not only through the back, you know, like normal consoles, like all consoles actually. So they're going to be exhausting heat towards the back, but these ones actually exhaust heat towards the side as well. So hot air comes out of here as well. Hence why there's extra holes there. So hot air can come out. So with that said, if you're going to be using these ones often, I highly recommend keeping them on their sides. So like not laying down like this. I mean, you could do it like that. Just make sure you get a lot of airflow. So make sure you're propping up the legs on something that allows air to pass through beneath and leave a lot of space on the side of the console. So air can exhaust, like don't keep it in like a media center or a media console where like, there's like a piece of wood here or something blocking it. Or like if there's like a piece of wood even here, so make sure that you have a lot of room for air to come out on both sides. So the back and the right side of the console. I don't know why Sony designed it that way. I don't understand, but it's just something to keep in mind. So the air intakes, the only air intakes that these guys have are going to be through here, through the top, through the front, and then those really tiny intakes on the side. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So... Um, these things are kind of, they, they need a lot of airflow, bottom line, a lot of airflow. Oh okay, yeah. I also wanted to show the, some of the modifications that I've done to this one over here. So this one, uh, I'm not too worried about like, you know, damaging it or at least damaging the case of it. I try to keep it like nice and clean. So I try to like clean up this area over here. I'm going to flip this around a little bit, but yeah, um, what I've done to this is I've actually drilled some holes in the bottom. So this is where the fan is. So right in the middle of where the fan is, I've drilled some holes. I could have done a better job. I mean, I wouldn't recommend doing it the same way I've done. But uh, I think if you just drill some holes in this area specifically around, it'll allow for air to pass through. 
into the fan. So the fan is spinning here, and then this will act as like an extra intake for the fan. So this is something else you could do. Just get more air into the system. So more air in means more air will come out. And it'll be colder air because it's not passing through like other components of the system. But yeah, I just wanted to add that now, on quickly. Another main tip I want to talk about. So if you guys end up opening your consoles and cleaning them out, good for you. Next thing is if you're not too, I mean, well, what I'm going to suggest is actually not very difficult, difficult at all. I would say opening up the console is much more difficult. So I'll see if I can link it below, but there's like a fan accelerator piece. Um, it's made by some person in the UK. It's about $10, I think, shipped to the US, 10 to $15. It's not, you know, super cheap, but it is a, a good addition, I would say. So what it does is, is accelerates your fan and you can choose which level you want. I think there's up to like 10 settings that you can choose. And the only thing is you plug in the old fan header into that piece. And then it has like another piece that looks just like the fan header that plugs into PlayStation 3's motherboard. So really it's just like a little add on please piece plug and play. So um, it's like really easy to, to install, but what it does is it speeds up the fan without, you know, burning it out or any other components. Now, the reason why this is good is because it's going to be pushing more air out of, you know, the sides of the console. So you're getting more exhaust and thus more intake. So you're getting, you're exhausting hot air faster and you're get, getting in cooler air quicker. So that's really good for keeping temps down. Um, another thing you can do is if you install like a custom ROM into your PS3. So like if you go into like, you know, start hacking it or something, which is actually something I've done with this one. So this one has a custom ROM installed. And it has a piece of software called Fan Control Utility. And what that software allows you to do is control the fan. It also has an auto mode that keeps the idle temps, or keeps the temps in general much lower than stock. So, yeah, one of the issues is that Sony, with like the regular PS3 firmware, sometimes with these older PS3s, since they have like old thermal pace and all that, they'll idle. So, like, they'll be on, like, not doing anything on the cross media bar screen not doing anything that'll be around like 70 degrees celsius sometimes 80 degrees celsius which is really bad so that's going to lead into the main causes that the y lot happens all right so the main causes of the playstation 3 yellow light of death main thing is that it gets too hot and it stays too hot for too long so the reason why is because these aren't designed very well unfortunately so sony did not design these too well uh, there's also another modification I've made to this one. So I've left this little uh, top part removable so I can show you guys. So I'm going to open this up. Just move that to the side over there. So uh, this is what it would look like stock except for these holes here. So I've drilled these holes in here. So sometimes when I use this console, I leave this top shell open. So uh, I can't open it up all the way. I haven't taken up all the screws, but I'll just tell you everything. Where is where? No, I'll tell you what parts of the system are where. So, of course, you're going to have the Blu-ray drive here. The Blu-ray drive goes to about this area. And then over here is just like open space. Uh, up in the front, you're going to have your card readers. So this area right here, probably until about here, is just going to be card reader. But back here, this is where the power supply is, which is kind of odd. So the power supply is right here on the top part of the system. It's actually sitting above the motherboard. So the motherboard of the PS3 is in this area right here. So it goes all along here. So above here, you're going to have the Wi-Fi card readers. In the back, you're going to have the Blu-ray drive. But right here is going to be the power supply. So it's the power supply is sitting right on top of the motherboard. And it's actually sitting on top of one of the main processors. So your cell processor is going to be in this area on the motherboard. And your uh, graphics processor, the RSX, is right over here. So this uh, power supply is generating a lot of heat. And one of the other things is that it actually has a metal casing. So for some reason, Sony designed the power supply with a metal casing. And as you know, metal conducts heat. What they did with the later generation fat PS3s even is they made the casing of the power supply plastic. So what I've done in this one, so as you can see, I've drilled some holes here. But more than that, I've also taken off the metal housing of the power supply. Um, I mean... You could do that if you want. It would help a little bit, especially since I drilled some holes here, so some heat will naturally dissipate out. And especially if you're doing it on the side as well, it'll dissipate from here.
But yeah, so the power supply stays, or the power supply is generating a lot of heat. It has a metal casing and it's sitting right on top of the main processor. So a lot of heat is being transferred from the power supply to the metal casing, from the metal casing to a metal shield on top of the motherboard. And then the motherboard metal shield casing, or metal shield actually, is going to be touching the gra or touching the cell processor. So that gets really, really hot and it stays hot for too long. And another big design flaw with these PS3s is that when they came out, a lot of companies were switching to lead-free solder. So, you know, trying to be more eco-friendly, they switched to solder that was lead-free. But the main benefit of the lead solder was that they could withstand thermal changes, so like getting really hot and really cold really quickly, much better than lead-free solder. So when these things get really hot and they stay hot for too long and then like you shut it off or something, then it's going to be, heat's going to be increasing because the fan's off, but then it's going to slowly decrease. But even that slow decrease is too much for this lead-free solder to handle, so over time the solder will kind of like crack and, um, you know, if connections break automatically, you get a Y-Lot. The Y-Lot happens because the motherboard cannot post to the BIOS. So that's why the yellow light of death happens. So sometimes for some of you that have had it before, yellow light of death PS3, it'll you'll have the red light when it's off and then you press it, it'll turn on for maybe like one or two seconds and then it blinks yellow and does the three beeps and then just, just keeps blinking red so it didn't even get enough time to post to uh the bios so it can't even turn on because those lead or those solder points are completely destroyed so some places will say that they can fix the y lot for you there really is no way to fix it unless you re-solder the motherboard or sorry, resolder the processor and graphics processor with lead solder. So that's the only way you can do it. And that's a really expensive. So that's going to be like closer to $100, sometimes over. Now, the ones that are cheaper than that, what they do is they, they um, what's it called? They uh, heat up the processors. So you're actually physically heating up the processors to the point where the solder will melt. And sometimes what they do is they add flux beneath and it'll connect those points again. So I've actually done that before and I had a PS3 that did work. So it worked for a while after that, but eventually it did die. But also at the time I didn't know how to prevent y -Lod. I just knew how to fix it uh, temporarily. So that is a temporary fix that you can do, but you also have to make sure that you're not repeating the same mistakes. So the, you have to make sure that your processor are not getting hot and staying hot for too long. So yeah, overall, sorry for the really long video and just a bunch of talking. But yeah, um, like I said, this one I've made a little bit of mods too. So like the airflow mod on the bottom over there with the holes, uh, the mod on top of the power supply with the holes and also taking off the metal casing of it. Um, what else? Oh yeah, of course, opening it up, uh, taking off all the dust and all that. And then also putting some new thermal paste and new thermal pads. So these, both of these consoles have new high quality thermal paste, Arctic Silver 5 I used, um, and they have new thermal pads. Like every single thermal pad has been replaced. So I would highly recommend doing that if you plan on using these consoles for a long time. And by long time, I don't mean like long play sessions. I mean, though you could do that, but if you want them to keep lasting for a while, I would definitely recommend doing that. But yeah, just something to keep in mind. 100% is that these PS3s exhaust heat from the right side and the back side. So make sure they have ample airflow going out for exhaust and intake. Um, also, if you're going to be using them for like a long time, I would definitely recommend keeping them propped up on their sides. So not like this, but something like that. So keep them propped up like this so hot air can be expelled up from up here and you'll have some cold air going here. And then also if you don't worry too much about damaging the casing or you know make it look anything different from stock i would also recommend um drilling the holes here for the fan so you'll just have to find exactly where the fans are i'll see if i can find like i don't know like a printout i remember finding like a printout of where exactly the fan was and it had like drill hole points or you could just uh you know transfer the image on so you i mean you would have to like put like sharpie or whatever and then drill through it but yeah, there was an easy way of doing that. I'll see if I can find that for you guys. But yeah, um, 
there's a lot of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I would, I'll try and link the iFixit guide for you guys. Also, another channel that I would recommend is NSC. So NSC, he's been doing like PS3 modification and YLOD videos for like a really, really long time. I would, I would say look at a bunch of his videos. So try and see a bunch of his videos and then gather everything you can from them. There's a lot of like things that he tries that are like experimental because that's really what he was doing with his channel. He was like experimentally modifying PS3s to see what things would work better, what things wouldn't work better. But he has a lot of videos of like repasting and like even opening up the IHS on the CPUs or the CPU and the GPU for changing that thermal paste. Though that's a lot more difficult and it can be dangerous. But yeah, he has a very good channel for like PS3 YLOD stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I just thought I would talk about it. So I got a comment for somebody asking for some information and I typed it out to them. But I feel like I could talk a lot more by making a short little video or not short it's kind of long but by making a video you know but yeah hopefully this has helped out um i plan to make some more videos with this ps3s so if there's anything you guys would like to see let me know um but yeah like i said hopefully this is a little bit helpful to you and you guys learn a little bit more about these models over here but yeah thank you for watching everybody i'm gonna go now